In this tutorial, we will show you how to set up and use Core Mini for standalone operation and logging. The end result of this example will be a standalone application that will log data and send a J1979 RPM request, as well as what steps you need to take to extract the data stored on your SD card in the device. To achieve this goal, we will need to take the following steps. First, we will create a J1979 RPM request. Create a function block to log data, load the core mini to the hardware, extract the data, and finally, we will review the collected data. To begin, we will start by creating a transmit or TX message. We will open Vehicle Spy and log in on the log on screen. Next, create a transmit message with the following parameters. Once the TX message is built, the periodic rate needs to be set. This can be done in the transmit panel. For this message, set the periodic rate to 0.25 seconds. When the core mini script runs, it will send this request out every 250 milliseconds. Next, we will create a function block to log data. To start, open up function blocks from scripting and automation, then function blocks. Use the plus to create a new function block and select Capture. A capture function block has a few options that need to be configured to tell it how to capture. Filter section. You can select the messages you want to capture. The default is to capture all messages. For this example, leave the default settings. Start section sets when to start the capture. For this example, select Start Immediately. When the hardware is powered, it will start collecting messages. Also, select the Restart Execution when execution finishes. With this option enabled, the hardware will create a new buffer once the current one is full. This will let the hardware capture continuously until power is disconnected. Stop and Trigger tab holds the settings for how to capture. For a simple Core Mini capture, select Collect in One Shot Buffer and enter 5000 messages for the buffer size. With these settings, the device will capture all incoming messages and split them into buffers of 5,000 messages each. Storage settings in this tab will tell you how to save the data. For this example, leave the default settings. Data tab shows the data that is being collected as the function block is running. This does not apply to Core Mini logging. If the script was running in Vehicle Spy, then captured messages can be viewed here. That's all that's needed to set up the capture. Now, it's time to send the Core Mini script to your device. The Core Mini console is found under Tools. This is where scripts can be loaded or removed from the hardware. The Core Mini console has a lot of information regarding the setup that is to be transferred. In the center of it, it shows the output list. This list will notify you of any errors or warnings. If any problems exist in the script, a red dot will be next to that item to warn you that something is wrong. The NeoVi USB section lets you set up where to send the script. The device section selects which of the connected hardware to send the script to. The storage section lets you choose where to store the script. For playback and capture scripts, the SD card must be used. The Run Core Mini After Download checkbox tells the hardware if it should run the script after it is loaded. If this is unchecked, the script will not run until the unit is repowered. The Send button will send the scripts to the hardware. Scripts can be removed from the hardware by using the Clear button. Once a script has been removed from the hardware, the script must be sent to the hardware again in order to run. If the Run Core Mini After Download checkbox was checked, then the script will be running after the Send button was clicked. Scripts can be ran or not ran depending on how the unit is powered. If your device is connected to power only, then the device mode will be in Core Mini Standalone mode. That means the device is running an internal script. If your device is plugged into your PC first, then power, then your device is running in PC mode. And finally, if your device was powered first, and then USB plugged in, then your device is running a Core Mini standalone mode. The device is not only running an internal script, but also can be used with your PC to monitor or do other tasks. Once your Core Mini is sent to your device, you can connect your Intrepid hardware to your vehicle or your vehicle simulator to collect data. 
Once you complete your data collection, Vehicle Spy has a built-in extract tool that will pull the data from your device. Faster data removal can be done using a good USB 3 card reader. Once you have your hardware connected to Vehicle Spy, then go to Tools and select Extract slash Export. This view is divided into two major areas, Extract tab and Export tab. Extract tab reads Vehicle Spy archive files from the device or SD card and converts them into Vehicle Spy binary files on the PC. In the Extract tab, you will see the source location appear at the top. If you have the Intrepid device plugged in via USB, then you will see your hardware name or the name of your SD card listed in this drop-down menu. Next, setup is to tell our application where to put the data. This can be done using the Browse button found in the Output Directory section. You can use the time entries on the top to filter the data you need. In the extract view, you can use the file tree to select the data you'd like to use. The last step is to click on the extract to vSpy binary or .vsb button, and you can see the parsing results area for the status results. You can also use the select all button to select all of the files. You can clear selection using the clear selection button. The advanced settings button will open the dialog that will show the settings on the various tabs. Clicking the Load Defaults button will revert all of the extractor settings back to their defaults. Now that we have the data from the card, all that is left is to review the data. There are two ways to review the data captured in Vehicle Spy. The first is to select one of the .vsb files that was extracted from Windows Explorer and drag it to the Messages view of Vehicle Spy. The other is to go to File, then Review Buffer. From the open dialog, select the .vsb that is to be looked at. Either method will fill the Messages view with data that was collected from the capture. If you have a database configured, the messages will be decoded. Vehicle Spy's filters can also be used to narrow down the traffic so only the messages of interest will be shown. In your data stream, you should see the RPM request. If you were connected to a vehicle that supports J1979 on HS CAN, you should also have a response with RPM data. This was meant to be a simple example. There is much more that can be done using Core Mini in supported hardware. A simple script function block can be created and used to simulate functions of an ECU or request diagnostic data. In addition, captures can be configured to log during set conditions or inputs. To learn more about Vehicle Spy 3 and see more tutorials, then please visit intrepidcs.com/vspy or subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch all of our tutorials.